Department of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Vault. I am your host with the most, Jersey Joe Archino, and this is my favorite time of the year to be a sports fan. You have the NBA playoffs. You have the NHL playoffs. The UEFA Champions League is going to be happening right now, and you have the start of Major League Baseball. The NFL Draft is next week. These couple of weeks are just pure insanity. Not a lot of sleep, but it's okay because it's just you get a lot of enjoyment out of it. There's always something happening. It's just a great time to be a fan. Obviously, though, yesterday, so much action, whether it was in soccer, whether it was in the NBA or the NHL. But this is more about the NBA because at its core for me, I think it's probably the thing I get the most excitement out of is the NBA playoffs. Now, I love the NHL playoffs as well. I think it's the it's a great product. But I'm just a super LeBron James fan, and whenever he's in the playoffs, which he always is, it always makes my day a little bit better. But Yesterday, we did see the Cavaliers' first taste of the playoffs, and it started off a little bit tough. Um, the Celtics have given them a little bit of trouble. I mean, they've played them well this year, but I still thought Cleveland would really roll over them in this series, and towards the back end of this game, that really is what happened. And really, the guy who you've got to just continue to give credit for, and I've been very vocal about all year, has been Kyrie Irving. When you look at Kyrie Irving, Game 1 against the Knicks, and you look at Kyrie Irving yesterday, it's unbelievable if you followed the Cavaliers all year and you watched his development over the season. He is one of the most versatile basketball players in the world. I mean, the he affects the game. He really does on every play, whether it's on the defensive end of the floor or if it's on the offensive end setting a screen, making the right pass, coming up with a big pat ball. He just situational awareness. I really don't think there's a lot of players in this league who have better situational awareness. And I think a lot of it is spending a full year now in, with LeBron James. I mean, anytime you're with LeBron James, who is the best situationally aware basketball player out there, that's going to rub off on you. And, and I mean, I think when you look at the way Kyrie and LeBron's relationship has developed over the season, I think the two of them kind of know it. They know that this is their team. They're the ones that the team lives and dies by. Everything that they do is just so important. Now, Kevin Love is a nice guy. I mean, but he's just not a great fit. Now, he did have a, he played well last night. I mean, I think the double-double was kind of a nice thing for him to be able to hang his hat on to because... That's one thing they're really going to need from him when you get to this point is Kevin Love's really going to have to step up his game. And really, I mean, look, he's been unfairly criticized at some points this season. But one thing that he has not been about has been situational basketball. Really hasn't come up with big plays when they mattered in big spots. Now, there were some points during the season when Kyrie was hurt and LeBron was hurt where he did play well. But I think for the most part, you really can't put your finger on one moment where there was a big game or a big moment that Kevin Love made the play. But I think this was a good start for the Cavs, setting that tone. Kyrie, of course, setting, paving the way. Kevin Love right behind him with a double-double. And LeBron James just kind of the glue that holds everything together. But I just think at the end of the day, this Cavs team, there's only really one team that I really feel gets in their way on the way to the finals now. I don't think it's Atlanta. Last night, Atlanta, of course, squeaking, uh, getting away from the Brooklyn Nets, which is expected. I mean, I really don't. I think the East is very weak. I really think it's Hawks, Bulls, and Cavs. And after that, there's a significant drop off. Now, the Wizards are good. The Raptors are okay, and they're playing each other now, which will end one of those teams' hopes. But I just think at the end of the day, it's those three teams, and it's such a big drop off after that. But at the when you get to it. Now everyone's talking about Derrick Rose because, look, he looked phenomenal in the first game against Milwaukee. Now, I like Chicago a lot. They've got a lot of size. They've got a lot of depth. I was on Friday, and Armamadeo, big shot rod. They made a lot of good points. I mean, look, they have the size. Pau Gasol led the league in double-doubles this year. He was terrific. Uh, Nikola Mirotic has been outstanding. I mean, he, he coming over from Europe and now playing the way that he did, he was terrific. You have Taj Gibson. So many, and don't forget about Noah. I mean, they have have so many big-time players. The one thing, though, you still worry about is 
they're not as aggressive defensively this year. Definitely not like we've been used to seeing the last couple years. And the three-point ball is always something that is a little bit too hit or miss for me for them. I still think it's Cleveland and they get by. I just think Timothy Mozgov, Tristan Thompson, are, and Tristan Thompson had a great game. I mean, I, I got to be honest. I said a couple weeks ago, in this offseason, depending on what happens with the Cavs, if I have a choice of keep bringing back Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love and I have to choose between the two of them, I'm bringing back Tristan Thompson. Just from that standpoint of, I think he fits in better. I think what he does fits them well. He's just very aggressive. His rebounding, very timely rebounding on offensive and defensive glass. Tristan Thompson is a really good fit for this team. Now his offense, again, away from the basket, he's not that useful. He doesn't really create offense on his own, but he does a lot of good things for this Cleveland team, and I like, I think he's a great fit, and he set a very good tone in their win yesterday. But overall, I think Cleveland gets to the NBA Finals. I think they win it all. I think there's going to be some tests. Um, but the one question we all had was, would these young, mainly young roster be phased by their first performance, and look, they really weren't. Kyrie Irving really just had went out there and played, and I think that's all I felt. If they just go out there and they play, David Blatt, I listened to a little bit of his presser yesterday, and he said, in the first game, he just felt like they were way too hyped. They were way, way too excited. The energy was just way too much. They made too much out of it. If they just go out there and play their game, they'll be fine, and I think he's correct. If they go out there they do what they've been doing since January 15th. I really don't see another team in the East or in the NBA who's going to stop them in a seven-game series, remind you. We're talking one game, maybe not, but we're talking a seven-game series to let them feel you out in just their tempo, the pace that they play at on both ends of the floor. I really just don't think anybody's beating them, but we will see. Of course, last night we had other games in the NBA. One of the surprising ones, now, I picked Memphis to beat Portland in this series, but I certainly didn't think that the first game was going to be as big of a blowout as it was Memphis beating Portland 100-86. I really thought that it was going to be competitive, but in Memphis is probably one of the last teams that, if I'm a coach, if I'm a fan, if I'm a player, they are not a team I want to play at any point in the playoffs, just because... No matter if you come out of that series and you win it, you are going to be, a lot is going to be taken out of you. It t drains so much of your energy playing them because they are so relentless. Their size just wears you down. It physically wears you down. We see it. I mean, when you look at the Thunder last year, how they had to go through that seven-game series against Memphis, the longer you stay in it against Memphis, it doesn't matter. You're just going to get worn down. It takes so much out of you. The relentless nature and the, the size and the defense that they play. I do not like playing the Memphis Grizzlies. I think they're as dangerous as anybody. And they really could get to the NBA Finals just based on... In a seven-game series, they just continually wear you down. Mike Conley played well. I, mean, I like Mike Conley a lot. If he continues to get healthy, he's in. That's one thing you really got to give Mike Conley credit for. Is you talk about guys getting better every single year in in their careers. He's really done that. I mean, if you look at Mike Conley his rookie year, and you look at him each season he's played, he's become a much better basketball player in each one. You could just see it in the playoffs when you watch him. I'm a big fan of Mike Conley and the work that he put in puts into his game. And then finally, last night you had the Spurs and the Clippers. The Clippers winning 107 to 92. Now, I think. A lot of people might be might go a little bit overboard and kind of worry too much here. A lot of us like the Spurs here, and I still do. I think it's not really too much to worry about because when the Spurs kind of start to feel you out, I think that's when they really start to get it done. Now, I do think in somebody, I forget who it was, did make a good point that they were worried about the Spurs. They thought they made a big mistake losing their last game and dropping from the two spot to the sixth spot, and maybe it was, but... This is going to be a very competitive series. DeAndre Jordan's timely play. I mean, again, I'm not I think he's a over overhyped a little bit in the fact that he doesn't do enough for me away from the basket, but at the basket, he really controls the game. I mean, when you look at all he can do just from a rebounding standpoint and getting 
loose balls around the rim. He controls that phase of the game, but he is a liability in some regards with his just lack of play away from the basket. He really doesn't do much away from anything at all, really. But that was a big win. Chris Paul really set a statement there. And nothing in the Western Conference really should surprise us because of how competitive it is there. I mean, if the Clippers end up being the Spurs, I don't think any of us would really be surprised. I don't think any of us would really be surprised of any of the results from the West because it's just an all-out dogfight. Unlike the East, I mean, the East, I really think... We all kind of have a firm understanding of how it's going to play out, what's going to happen. Chicago's really going to run over Milwaukee. Cleveland's really going to run over Boston. Atlanta's going to run over Brooklyn, and so on and so forth. But I think for the most part in the West, we really could see a lot of back and forth swinging, swinging the series different ways. Again, you most likely San Antonio bounces back in Game 2. This is going to be a, an interesting series. I think they all are really going to be, except for maybe Golden State. I think aside from that series, they all really could go either way. Maybe Houston as well. A lot of people did like Dallas, but I, I don't know. I just don't see it. I think Houston has so much firepower to get past that one. I don't think they get to the finals, but I do think that Houston does take care of the business against Dallas pretty reasonably. But... That is really all we've had in the NBA playoffs so far. I think for the most part, when you look at all the results of the first matchups that we've had, I don't think you could really put one surprising notion, aside from maybe Memphis. Not that Memphis won, but I think it's the way that they won and how dominant it was just in that regard. But it was a lot of fun. We're obviously going to be back every single day covering these games. It's just a great time of the year to be a sports fan, but we'll be back on later in the day. Everyone stay with us.